Okay, we'll call the Tuesday, October 18th, 2016, Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors meeting to order. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. I was posted uh, October 14th at 4 p.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. There are 23 supervisors present. Thank you. Approval of the September 20th, 2016 journal. Supervisor Winkle. Motion to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Supervisor Epping. I'd like to second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Any questions or discussion? Please push your I button or nay. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Presentations. Uh, we have none. Public addresses. We also have none there. Let's see for three for three. Letters, <clears throat> communications, and announcements. Uh, no letters and communications, just two announcements. One, the November legislative breakfast meeting has been canceled. And just a reminder that we meet three consecutive Tuesdays. So be back here next Tuesday. That's all. Thank you, John. County Administrator's Report. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. On your desks are the 2017 proposed budgets, are they not? You have some extensive binders. Wendy, Sharnan, and I are pleased to distribute those this evening. The proposed budget includes a tax levy decrease of 1% and a property tax decrease, a property tax rate decrease of 2%. And this will be the fifth property tax reduction in the last 10 years. So my compliments to everyone in the room. The budget reflects tremendous teamwork amongst this county board. Obviously, the Finance Committee has been doing the heavy lifting of late, but the board as a whole all has been involved with the development of this budget. Our department heads, our staff, once again, fiscally responsible and continuing to provide quality programs and services. This budget preserves core services that people in our community expect and rely upon, clearly law enforcement, health and human services, and our transportation system, an area we spent a lot of time on this past year. Key components of the 2017 budget include funding to establish a drug treatment court and provide non-hospital-based detoxification services for people struggling with heroin and other drug addictions. As you know, last year, the Health and Human Services Department, working with a number of our partners in law enforcement and the circuit courts, got rolling with the planning on this, but it actually just got implemented this year and the funding will be there of course for next year to have a full year of implementation. The budget also includes the implementation of the half percent sales tax to maintain our transportation system, purchase equipment and provide property tax relief, construction of a new transportation complex to consolidate three aging facilities into one, reconstruction and resurfacing at the airport, courthouse security enhancements that 90% of our employees responded in a survey they very much appreciate. The courthouse front steps, flagpole repairs are in this budget, new sheriff's department squads, HVAC upgrades at the University of Wisconsin-Sheboygan, 
roof replacement and fire alarm system upgrades, Rocky Knoll nursing home resident call system enhance enhancements, as well as other quality of life amenities at Rocky Knoll facility is really improving and I want to compliment the health care centers and all involved for that. And then of course continued support for our Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation that's really been on a roll. I'm hearing a lot of good things about activities in the, in the county in the area of economic development. As you know, working together for years, for years now, we have implemented a number of cost-saving initiatives. Our total payroll today, our total payroll today is less than it was in 2008. It's pretty remarkable. Because we know demands for services certainly haven't gone down. But we have streamlined, prioritized, consolidated a lot of good work by this county board our department heads and staff. We have healthy fiscal reserves, an excellent bond rating, and hardworking, caring staff providing quality programs and services. I'm proud to be a part of this team. The proposed budget consists of a total property tax levy of $47.8 million and a total budget of $146 million. The overall budget is going up, but predominantly due to capital projects such as the new transportation complex. The annual budget supports 19 departments, approximately 820 employees implementing over 200 programs and services. We've got a lot going on here. And we're helping make a lot of good things happen in this community. Final budget review will be next week, Tuesday. Yes, next week, Tuesday, October 25th. And final approval of the budget will be on November 1st. So once again, we've just about completed an annual budget process that started formally back in June, though really in February, believe it or not, we start working on it already. So in a few months, we'll be right back at starting the next. But it's been a good process. I appreciate the feedback of the Finance Committee. Uh, Chair of the Finance Committee, Greg Wegeman, couldn't be here today as a conflict, but I know he's really pleased with the good work that all the department heads have done preparing their respective budgets, the work of the liaison committees to review and refine, the leadership of the county board chair and the executive committee. Uh, everybody, I, I hope, <coughs> shares some pride in the work in the budget. So please take a chance to review it in its entirety. If you have questions on anything, don't hesitate to contact myself or Wendy Sharnan. And if we don't have the answers, we'll get them for you or work together to improve it. The last two topics that I have for the evening are a little bit on the lighter side, but are really, really important. Uh, every now and then the county has a County Citizen Leadership Award. And as you, as you know, we've done this in the past, and I don't think we've done now, had presented one for perhaps two, maybe three years. And uh, this year I wanted to make sure that we did so because there's so many good people in this community working hard and helping make good things happen. And, it's nice to recognize them when they're still with us, isn't it? Rather than talk about it after the fact. And so tonight, I'd like to first start with an individual, our first Sheboygan County Citizen Leadership Award for 2016, Dave Smith. If he could please join me. If he could come up here, Dave, and then if the Chairman and Vice Chairman could join me as well. <coughs> As a committed volunteer and dedicated member of our community, Mr. Dave Smith is more than deserving of the Sheboygan County Citizen Leadership Award, and we're privileged to present this to him this evening. Although his list of accolades is lengthy, we only have five or ten minutes for this, Dave. <laughs> Dave is probably most well known for his time spent at North High School as a teacher and guidance counselor. He is one of those standout teachers that students remember years later and, undoubt and undoubtedly positively impacted hundreds of kids throughout his tenure. Since retiring from North High, Dave has spent a lot of time continuing to volunteer his time and talent to help make our community a better place. And that's so important and he's been a role model. Dave volunteered with the Appalachie, Appalachie, thank you, project for 10 years which works with teenagers on homes in needy areas. He also volunteered at the John Michael Kohler Arts Center for 10 years, 
even being rec recognized like his wife Sherry, who's with us this evening, as a volunteer of the year at one time. Kohler Andre State Park, and most recently the Cedar Grove Ornithological Research Station, this cold isn't helping me any, <laughs> have also been recipients of Dave's hard work and volunteerism. An organizer of the Sheboygan Bicycle Club, Dave also helped out and organized bike rides and volunteered at our bike rodeos and bike corrals in the county. Dave serves on several committees, generally as a bicycle pedestrian advocate, perhaps why he's in such good shape. He was active on the Sheboygan County Citizens Advisory and Technical Committee as part of the non-motorized program, and he currently serves as a member of the Sheboygan County Recreational Facilities Management Advisory Committee and the Technical Advisory Committee for Sheboygan's Metropolitan Planning Organization area. We need to work on the length of these titles. <laughs> yes. Beyond serving his community in these ways, Dave especially goes above and beyond by helping to make the rebike program a success. This is really cool if you haven't heard about this. Along with several other dedicated volunteers, Dave has not only maintained, but has actually grown this program over the years. Rebike serves individuals that might not otherwise be able to afford transportation. By giving them the opportunity to spend a few hours repairing a donated bike and then take the bike home, free of charge, earned through their labor. He is responsible for the behind the scenes work including maintaining a database of recipients and regularly traveling around the town with a trailer to pick up donated bikes. So if you have donated bikes out there, Dave Smith is your man. This initiative has been going on since 2010, 2010, strong since 2010. In fact, operating out of the basement at Paradigm Coffee, they've given out over 1,400 bikes so far. Isn't, isn't it? It's now what? 1,600 since writing this just this morning. <laughs> That's outstanding. That's outstanding. So please join me and Chairman Wagner and Vice Chairman George Marthenzi in recognizing Dave as a citizen leader, someone who's making good things happen for Sheboygan County. We're proud to know you, we're proud to work with you. Thank you. been in front of a group this big since I left North High School, but, it's, uh, but there are a few familiar faces out there. And if I can take just a minute, um, as Adam said, this thing started in 2010, in April, and sometime in 2009, uh, I had this idea, but Tom Kraus, who was involved with the uh, Bike and Walk to Work Week uh, activities, and Mary Ebeling, who was the director of the non-motorized project at that time, all came up with this idea. Uh, so I can't take sole credit for that, but uh, Tom is still working, and so he <coughs> makes it when he can. He works out of town and still gets back on Wednesday nights when we do this. Uh, Mary is off to Madison, so that left me sort of uh, in the mainstream. But I have to say that, you know, it was a great idea, or it seemed like a great idea at the time. But without Tom coming when he can, and uh, Aaron and Emily, who we lean on with the county uh, quite often for various things that we need. And of course, uh, Kate Krause at, at Paradigm and the new owners of that building who um, not only are, are letting us stay there, but they actually want us to stay there, which is amazing. So we work out of the basement at the, and you know we couldn't operate at all if we didn't have that place to, uh, to call home. Uh, and the local uh, uh, law enforcement, mainly the Sheboygan Police Department, where we get the bulk of the bikes that we recondition and then turn around and donate to people or give to people. Um, so there's all that. And then along with Tom Krause, uh, my neighbor and friend uh, Jim Gross, Tom Vandenberg, who's uh, uh, here tonight and a former uh, colleague at North High School, uh, Paul Nickel, uh, he was retired uh, from the city. He's a former student. He works with us since he retired. He hasn't missed a night. 
uh, Craig Fields, Dan Goodine, some of these names I know you know, uh, Bob Bono, uh, Stefan Strelo, and then an elder, elderly gentleman, I guess I could say that, uh, Henry Lippman comes in to clean up every, these are people who, some of them have been with us since the start, and some of us have, some of them have come more lately, but they're there every week, and you know, even though this was a great idea and it's a great program, it couldn't couldn't happen if it wasn't for everybody else just jumping in and take part with this. So I can't accept this without mentioning them because it wouldn't happen without them. So thank you very much. I said we had two Citizen Leadership Awards this evening, and the other one may be a bit of a surprise to the individual, but would Emmett Feldner please come forward? Had he known, I'm sure he'd be in a three-piece suit right now. <laughs> three decades ago, in 1985, the year I graduated from high school, <laughs> Emmett Feldner joined the Plymouth Review. He committed himself to being truthful in word and print about what Sheboygan County's elected officials at all levels said and did. He shared his observations on community events, the ups, the downs of living in this area, mostly the upside. Emmett has a special talent of writing the lead to such stories, which helps make you want to read them. What follows is then factual, fair, clear, and clever writing, providing a very good history of what is going on. Review publisher Barry Johansson said, Emmett is so good with facts, you know they can be trusted. And he's such a master of all the aspects of our style of intensely local journalism, he added, that we even trust him to load the mailbags. <laughs> That's pretty high praise. <clears throat> Most importantly, he continued, what Emmett does every day professionally and in his personal life sets an example for how leadership in a community must rely on fact, interaction, good humor, and tolerance. Sheboygan County is fortunate that he calls it home and all of us a friend. In 1999, Emmett wrote a story recognized as one of the best investigative reports in the nation about Sheboygan County's decision to hire its first county administrative coordinator. I bet some of you know this and others, really? Let me say that again. In 1999, Emmett wrote a story recognized as one of the best investigative reports in the nation about Sheboygan County's decision to hire its first administrative coordinator. Some of you may not be aware of this, but I was actually the second county administrative coordinator. The first lied on his resume, was ousted by Emmett, for he was only here for two weeks. If it wasn't for Emmett Feldner, I probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> so you can either thank him or you can blame him. Since then, I have seen Emmett cover nearly every county board meeting, county fair, Plymouth parade, high school graduation, German fest, local sporting events, and the list goes on and on. He seems like he is everywhere, touting his big heavy camera. You know they do have newer cameras now, they're a little lighter. But he's everywhere. He has written thousands of articles about Sheboygan County, hundreds of editorials, many in support of the Sheboygan County Board initiatives, including the cleanup of the Sheboygan River and Harbor, <coughs> Amsterdam Dunes Wetland Mitigation Bank and Preservation Area, and most recently funding and support of maintaining our transportation system. Years ago, Emmett Felder and I participated in a WHBL Friday Forum when Jerry Bader was first here and first created that program. One day he gave me some advice that I have frequently repeated to myself and others. It actually choked me up a little bit earlier today as I was thinking about this. I had shared with him some tough sledding of some kind. 
I think we were in the midst of maybe closing comprehensive health care center or privatizing Sunny Ridge. I think it was before that, but I was sharing some tough sledding. And Emmett listened, and thankfully he said off the air, this too will pass. That's all he said to me. Just looked at me and he said, this too will pass. And of course he was right. And I can tell you since then, I have repeated that to myself and to others I don't know how many times. This too will pass. Sheboygan County is a better place because of the tremendous work ethic, passion, skill, and ability of Emmett Felder. And it is my privilege, my privilege to be up here with the chair and vice chair to present the Sheboygan County Citizen Leadership Award to Emmett Felder. Congratulations. So who is Adam talking about? <laughs> uh, when Adam said that about uh, being everywhere, or seeming to be everywhere, I just remembered something that my uh, father used to quote my grandfather saying. My grandfather grew up in the days of the horse and the buggy, and he would have said that I'm just like horse droppings, I'm everywhere. <laughs> but uh, this really, all I can say is thank you, and there's probably a lot more people who deserve this a lot more than I do, but I'm not giving it back. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Uh, consideration of committee reports, executive committee, resolution number 21. Regarding approving revisions to farmland preservation plan, committee recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for adoption of resolution number 21. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Obler. And I'll support that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Obler. Any discussion? Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to mention, while the planning department has put a, a lot of work into this, that when we pass this tonight, we cannot forget Kevin Strzok. Because without Kevin Strzok, I don't think we would any longer have farmland preservation in Sheboygan County. He did a wonderful job in coming up with a plan for the town of Sherman, which is multiplied in Sheboygan County and throughout the state. So a big thank you to Kevin. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Any other discussion or questions? Okay, please push your I or nay button. Motions approve unanimously. Thank you. Supervisor, excuse me, resolution number 23. Authorize the relocation of highway offices and facilities. Committee recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Winkle. Motion to adopt. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Supervisor Glavin. Support. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Baumgart. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm going to be voting against this for two reasons. One, um, I felt very strongly that uh, taking 40 acres of prime farmland uh, uh, is, is not the kind of leadership we should uh, be showing. And the fact that uh, one of the uh, three uh, places that we were going to uh, consolidate uh, was r right close to Plymouth and um, although I don't have all the facts uh, I assumed we could have done a better job at looking at that for for the location that would have been closer to uh, a population base but uh, be that it is uh, as it is uh, uh, it, it makes us look a little bad uh, at a time we're adding a half a percent sales tax so uh, but that's not the reason I'm going to vote against it it's uh, because we've I think poorly uh, chose the location and uh, uh, used good farmland, and I don't think that's something uh, a county that prides, that prides itself in being a dairy county uh, uh, should do. So uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Baumgart. Supervisor Bemis. When we were coming up with the idea, we originally had looked the area around the, the old Plymouth shed 
and we found that it would be almost impossible to, other than to tear it down and start over again, and that still would not have given us on, enough land. So the area we picked is a good compromise between Elkhart Lake and Plymouth. And it covers the uh, northwest corner of the county. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Supervisor Epping. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Chairman Wagner. Contrary to what Supervisor Bumpgard says, I think we are making the right move in, in uh, authorizing this relocation in new highway sheds and facilities. We are preparing for the needs of the future at, at a time when we can uh, uh, afford it the, the best because even though it's going to cost us money, it's going to cost us less now than it would in the future and it, we will not be caught with our, our pants down with needs in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Supervisor Wait a word that. Yes, thank you, Chairman Wagner. I just have a, a few comments. I, I'm not going to be supporting this either. I know the way this is worded, we're just purchasing, or we're just passing on the, to relocate, but technically we're actually approving here an extra $10 million of expenditures for the highway department. Uh, last meeting, last month, we approved 15 million, that was part of the capital plan, and this meeting, we're approving with this resolution, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Attorney Bissing, we're approving the, the remaining because we're actually taking um, the funds that we'll be receiving from, from actually, I added up the seven different numbers that are showing up on this resolution in the financial section, uh, plus there's additional information. And I was thinking, first, it shouldn't be a puzzle to have to figure out how much we're spending on a, the transportation complex. And I've asked a couple of people, do you know how much we're spending? You know, and even uh, um, our newspaper had published that we're spending 15 million on a transportation complex. And it shouldn't be a puzzle what we're actually spending on the transportation complex. So I, I had an issue with that. So technically, if we add up all the seven and also eight numbers, there's an eighth that's not on here, we're spending $25.4 million on the transportation complex. I'm gonna repeat that. We're spending $25,428,000 on the transportation complex. And I think that should be transparent. That should be something that is right out there. We shouldn't have the newspaper getting that confused with a 15 million number. We shouldn't have to do the math when we're looking at it as board members. We shouldn't be asking other colleagues of mine who really don't know how much we're spending on the transportation complex. I appreciate we passed resolution number six last year. Long-term plan, we were purchasing land for just over a half a million dollars, which isn't included in this total because that's separate. The land purchase came out of our fund balance. <clears throat> for the Transportation Department fund balance in the amount of $548,000. So now we're actually spending 50 times what we approved at that point just for the land for the transportation complex. So there are a number of reasons I'm not supporting the resolution. I realize many of you have been on the board much longer than I have been and I realize the transportation complex has been a piece that that we've, we've needed for some time. I don't see the gap between where we are now with our buildings and the 10 times cost of where we're going with the new transportation complex. You know, I wish I could be able to see that picture and support this and be able to explain to those that have asked me, well, what are we really doing? Um, I wish I had that picture, but until I have that clear picture, I, I just can't support the, uh, this resolution to, uh, to fund that extra $10 million for the transportation complex. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Rayner. Carl, did you? Uh, I don't fact check uh, the statements by supervisors uh, 
Otherwise, I'd be here all night. Supervisor Bemis. I think our transportation system is probably one of the most important things we have going for us in the county. We want businesses to come, and I think that the people that you're probably talking to are people who live in the city that are not involved in the rural areas where we need more transportation. A lot of the people who work in the city come from the rural areas, and uh, in a way we're saving money by not having to repair old facilities, which are inadequate for the larger equipment that we've got. That's basically it. I've got to support this. I've been around here for a while, and I, I could not vote no on this one. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Supervisor Epping. Thank you again. Uh, this will be my last comment. The funding paragraph at, at the end of the, or under the fiscal note for this resolution, tells me what the cost of this whole project is going to be from its inception to its end. And that is the information I will give to my people that ask me about it and how much it's going to cost. This is information received from our finance director, and this is what I've been led to believe it will be the total cost, and I think it's all a reasonable amount, and I will support this. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Any other comments? Okay, please push the I button or the nay button. Motions approved, 21 ayes, two nays. Thank you. Super, uh, resolution number 24. Regarding uh, supporting, quote, just fix it for statewide road maintenance, committee recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption of resolution number 24. Supervisor Gehring, thank you. Supervisor Testrudi. Mr. Chairman, I'll second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudi. Any other discussion? Supervisor Baumgart. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just a little background. Um, uh, I go back a ways too, as Mr. Bemis does, but he goes far back, much further. Matter of fact, they might even name the facility after uh, Richard Bemis because of his longevity. <laughs> but I would point out, and maybe should, uh, but I would point out that uh, uh, some time ago, uh, we had uh, passed uh, uh, in the legislature a uh, uh, mechanism that as the uh, prices of, of uh, things would go up, the gas prices could be adjusted um, on a regular basis. Well, uh, we had a number of legislators, including um, at least one or two from our area, that said we should get rid of that. We should only pass the legislation to raise the gas tax. And then for the next eight years, after they got rid of that, never raised the gas tax and put the state of Wisconsin uh, with others uh, uh, in, in well beyond, uh, beyond uh, keeping up our roads. So I, I point that out that we had a mechanism there. We still needed more for road and transportation. Um, but uh, people that wanted to make sure that uh, they controlled uh, when the gas tax would be increased, uh, got rid of the uh, adjustment and then never took on the responsibility of doing it. So, a uh, little history, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Baumgart. Any other points of discussion? If not, please push your I or nay button. Motions approved, 22 ayes, one nay. Thank you. Consideration of Committee Reports Finance Committee, Resolution Number 18. Regarding authorizing county to lend Bay Lake Regional Planning Commission $72,608 to refinance pension liability, committee recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Damp. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption of Resolution 18. Thank you, Supervisor Damp. Supervisor Winkle. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Any questions or discussion? <coughs> Supervisor Epping. Yes, I do have one question about this. Even though we're, we're slated to make $11,000 on this, this is over a 10-year period, if, if I, what I read is proper. That's only 
only making a eleven hundred dollars, you know, a year on this money uh, that we're lending, and I wonder if that's a wise use of uh, seventy-two thousand dollars, which we could use for our own benefit uh, on this. Although, you know, I think they're getting a, a good good deal on this, and and I was just wondering if that's a good way of spending our capital, you know. So, thank you for your time. Uh, you're welcome. I'll defer this. Corporation Council Bissing, if you wanted to talk about that. Those numbers are correct, right? What Tom said? Uh, they're currently paying 7.2%. Uh, this refinancing allows this agency to uh, pay off the obligation to the state immediately. And uh, the term to us is a 3% interest over 10 years. So, you know. I'm not in a position to comment whether we have better investments we could make or worse investments. The point of this, I don't think, was to gouge another unit of government by making as much interest as we could off of them, but rather to help them out in a way that does not adversely impact our bottom line. Thank you, Carl. Supervisor Bemis. I just kind of hope that this loan turns out better than the million dollars we loan the city for the harbor. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Okay, all those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay, I meant. The motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Resolution number 19. Regarding approving standard intergovernmental agreement for county sales tax revenue sharing rec county rec uh, committee recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Winkle. Motion to adopt. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Supervisor Testrudi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudi. Supervisor Epping. Thank you. Sorry to talk so much tonight, but I got questions and I need them answered. I see in, the, in this resolution number 19 that there was one, one person did not, not vote for it, and that's uh, Vice Person George Marthenzi, and I was wondering if he's not present that day or whether he has a reason for voting against it. Is it, is it uh, proper to ask that question? I was not at the meeting. I was not at the meeting. He was absent. I did not okay. sign an opposition. I did not sign it because I was not at the meeting when it was discussed. Okay. Uh, can I ask a follow-up question if he does support this one? Go ahead. Can, do you support this, Vice Chairman Marathonzi? I refuse to tell you who I'm going to vote for for president. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of that, I guess. <laughs> Move right along. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> Germane to the issue <laughs> or answers? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay. That motion is also approved unanimously. Thank you. Resolution number 20. Regarding acceptance of dedicated donation for Amsterdam Dunes, committee recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption of resolution number 20. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Damp. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I second that motion to adopt the resolution. Thank you, Supervisor Damp. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Resolution number 22. Regarding authorizing Sheboygan County Planning and Conservation Department to apply for county conservation aids, committee recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for adoption of resolution number 22. Supervisor Damp. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion to adopt resolution number 22. Thank you, Supervisor Damp. Uh, Supervisor, no. Any discussion on resolution number 22? Supervisor Epping? No, never mind. Uh, <laughs> just 
kind of have a little fun in this job once in a while, okay? Uh, all those in favor, vote aye. <laughs> those opposed, nay. Motion is approved unanimously. Res <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Super, uh, resolution number 25. Regarding authorizing county aid for bridge culvert construction in the town of Wilson, committee recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Glavin. I move for adoption. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Hoffman. I second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Hoffman. Discussion? Discussion? Roger, did you have a question? No. No other questions? Okay, all those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay. Right. Motions approved unanimously. Bless you, Charlie. Okay, consideration of committee reports, human resources. Uh, this committee, there won't be a vote on this. This is simply for information, so. Um, I believe it was handed out. Is that correct? Supervisor Uraner. I'd like to just make a few comments on the, uh, the health insurance piece, if I may. Go ahead. Now okay, is the time. Thank you. You may. So this, this does not look large, and, and I know many of you have, when I first joined the county board as a, as a business owner, I, I realized that you know, I buy my own health insurance and for my uh, staff and my family, and it seemed small when you're looking at the monthly amount, but really when we're looking at a family plan, it comes to over $20,160 a year. When we also add in the uh, dental insurance, it comes to $21,637,000 a year for a family plan. And I don't know if any, any of us are paying that for our health and dental insurance. Uh, I know I'm paying a fraction of that. In addition, I see large companies, W-2s, and uh, if you have a family member that pays for health insurance, it would show up on the W-2, the em employer portion, and it's typically significantly less than that. I get, as a government agency, we should have really good benefits. Um, however, it is exceptionally large compared to other large companies in our community. So the year, th over three years ago when I joined the board, I had mentioned and communicated that really it it's something that should be looked at. I did see that in a previous um, goals and objectives, that was one item that was looked at that we really need to do a better job of keeping those costs down. Um, so I, I look at the health insurance as, as a lose-lose. It's a lose for employees and a lose for the county, even though we're self-insured. And by the way, at that year we did find out that our fund balance was showing up in our, as a liability instead of, a, instead of a, a fund balance. So when that was reclassified, we had an extra roughly $7 million of added fund balance. But my point with this is, Think about that, $21,000 a year we're paying for every full-time employee. It's a significant chunk of money, and I get that many of you aren't paying for your own health insurance, so that may be something that's not a piece that you can understand, but perhaps you can ask your family what they're getting for their health insurance. This is a huge expense for our county to the tune of over $16 million of costs go into our, our health insurance piece. So I just wanted to make those comments. It's been an area, many of you know, I've been saying, boy, I wish we could really do something. I get, we saved a million dollars last year by just making a phone call and that was wonderful. <laughs> um, uh, I just would hope that we can continue to work on that piece. Uh, I want it to be a win-win for the county and for the employees. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Rainer. Supervisor Bemis. I think we'll have to blame the rising cost of health care on the Obama plan. And the reason I say that, I was talking to a businessman, and he says since the 
the Obama plan was approved, his health care costs have gone up 100 percent. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Supervisor Rayner? No, no. Yes, yes. Yeah, go so ahead. Chair Chairman Bemis, <laughs> I would encourage you to ask that businessman or businesswomen all over this community what they're paying for a family health plan what their employer is paying for a health plan or what they're paying in total, and then compare that to our $21,637. That's all I'm asking. Yes, insurance costs have gone up significantly over the years. However, when I've seen W-2s from large companies over the years compared to what our county has, it's, it's very much higher. And, um, there's many things we can do. We can do health savings account. Most companies have gone towards that. Kohler has, Valreth has. We haven't even touched on going into some of those other avenues that are win-win for the county and for the employers. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Sure. Okay, as I said, there's no vote on this. It's simply information received. Thank you. I'll turn it over to the vice chair now. Resolutions introduced. Resolution number 26 from the Planning, Resources, Agriculture, and Extension Committee. Uh, regarding improving revisions to farmland preservation plan. Resolution number 26 is referred to the Executive Committee. <coughs> Ordinance is introduced. Ordinance number 7 from Planning, Resources, Agriculture, and Extension Committee. Regarding creating property assessed clean energy financing ordinance. Ordinance number 7 is referred to the Finance Committee. This order of, uh, on our agenda is adjournment. Supervisor Bemis. I move we adjourn. And Supervisor Winkle. Second. Motion second to adjourn. All in favor, vote aye. Opposed, if you want, vote no. Uh, Supervisor Testrodi. Well, Supervisor Testrodi and Supervisor Nelson. Roger. Henry. Uh, Henry, Ed. Henry, Ed. Henry. Supervisor Testrodi and Supervisor Nelson, vote, please. We got the Henry. <laughs> Roger. Together. Thank you. We are adjourned. <laughs> we stand adjourned.